more super tournaments. Right. So there are more points out there, but right now, if he got top four, then that would put him over. Okay. The game's cool. ready. We're heading on to Thunderbird for our first match. It's not 39, 39. They ruined our synergy, Artosis. But we're counting. Africa S2 alive. And now he has a team anymore, so I can't say any of those like stupid things that end in alive. Yeah. I'll never make it into the YouTube highlight videos now. <laughs> well, maybe he won't. Maybe this guy won't either. Well, maybe he will. I don't know. I really want to see. I always hate seeing those like legendary players kind of start to you know, fall off and dwindle away. And I definitely think that, at least from kind of watching Rogue recently in online tournaments, his results have been actually fantastic. But uh, when it comes to offline, which is obviously uh, GSL and tournaments where you have to really prepare ahead of time, I don't know. Um, maybe this is a live chance to kind of reclaim his glory. But they're both fighting kind of for that same thing. Yeah, yeah. I would, uh with that now this is a very aggressive opening by rogue like this is like a 13 12 basically so let's let's see what he wants to do with it i mean it might be just so simple as send your zerglings across the map get that cancel maybe break the wall as well because uh i mean a lot of live fans out there but you know i'm, I'm sure that somewhere downstairs no regret is wiggling right now because this is one of his builds where you break through the reactor and stuff. It's like it, he is he has told me and I think most of the world all about all the various ways you can destroy good players with this build. Yeah, and you mentioned breaking through the reactor. I mean, Thunderbird is one of our kind of wackier maps uh, where there are a lot of different you know uh, pathways that you would not necessarily traditionally be able to uh, to travel, especially if you want to mine those out, yeah. with bring in some drones. Or there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do, and certainly this is one of them. But especially with this Reaper getting out here, let's see how many Zerglings he's going to be able to notice. Well, he's he's keeping them over there, and now all these oh, things get there to we go, go for the counter. So. Let's like, see what the reaction is. I think that this is probably a canceled CC, right? I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, there it is. Yeah, they, there's no other way to do it. And notice how he cancels his add-on and then floats this immediately. That was a really great move by mm -hmm. Alive. Yeah, you never want to have that moment where you have to spam rebuild the add-on and it keeps getting taken down. You have to block. It's just total tragedy. But now he's able to rewall because of that cancel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, now you don't have an add-on. You just restarted your command center. It's kind of a tough spot for Alive, but let's not forget, a lot of the economy was thrown away by Rogue to do this. Certainly. And even though he is droning behind this, he's not like c completely like hard committing to this. Um, who, who do you think was like more set behind there? Because for, for Alive, everything is just going to be way later. But I mean, maybe Rogue realizes there's the, the pressure is off so he can just re-drone. Yeah, he's certainly going to be able to re-drone. And let's not forget, he kind of has some map control. You're kind of forcing the Reaper to be back. Right. Your opponent's playing a little bit in the dark. They have to play slightly defensively. But I feel like Alive Ooh. reacted. Wow, that was really nice. But I feel like overall, Alive reacted basically perfectly. He did not screw around with the command center. He did not screw around with spam rebuilding tech labs to hold, <laughs> right? We, that's yeah. what you see a lot of the times against this build. Yeah. Uh, so I think that he dealt with it well. So I'm, I'm, while I'm feeling fine about the overall position of the Terran player, I still feel like Rogue is okay just because Alive hasn't shown, you know, <laughs> the ability to win in GSL this year, as, as brutal as that is to say. Yeah, I mean, he's good enough to qualify for this tournament, but to, to give you a context, uh, he in order to qualify, he lost the first day's qualifier, and then on the second day's qualifier, he beat uh, Nice and Armani and qualified that way. Okay, uh, okay. I think it was Ar Armani. Yeah. I, I mean, Armani's pretty good, but, you know, that's not... You're not knocking out someone that's around a 32 player every season, and you're not rocking, knocking out around a 16 player for sure. So, not the hardest path. Yeah, and I think for for Alive, you know, he also recognizes that he has a lot to prove here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, we might say it, but obviously the players feel it uh, yeah. when their performances haven't been, you know, living up to the hype. Um, but uh, I, I don't know, I'm open-minded. So let's see what the sure. follow-up is going to be. There's a Banshee on the way, two more racks in production, and we're getting uh, Double Engineering Bay behind it too. 
Yeah, a lot of spores went up there by Rogue, so he's pretty ready for this harassment. Baneling Nest coming up, more Lings being made. Not sure exactly what the... Oh, is he... Oh, wait, no, never mind. <laughs> I was like, is he going to do a drop? No, he just he sees the command center. Anyways, uh, not sure if, if Rogue is going to like pull the trigger and try to get aggressive again. I, I mean, I don't think so. Obviously, we do see the Baneling Nest coming down, but he's just massively droning behind us. So, yeah. not really... Kind of both players recognizing, wait, this is the place where we power up and get ready for phase two. I wonder if the Baneling Nest is a nod towards the possibility of a Hellbat Banshee push, right? That's mm. that's definitely something that you see from time to time. I can't think of why else you'd be having a, a Bailing Nest right now, but five gas is going down at once seems all, seems uh, seems about right. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess that's a good way to put him to we use gas. Let's get five of them. I mean, he's also building double Evo Chamber, right? So he's going to pump some of that into there and uh, continuing to expand and Killed more drones. He's going up to, I think, 60, yeah, about 60 when all this is said and done. 65, 70. He's just not stopping. I mean, Rogue was a little bit of that Zerg TY for a while where he'd just get comically oh, yeah. high yeah. drone numbers. Well, I, I really like that style of play no matter what race you play. If you want to get 80, 90 workers, I think that's a, it's an awesome way to play. It can get a little bit confusing because your standing army power won't be as strong as your opponent's, but there's ways to play around that. And Rogue is definitely a master of those types of ways. Now, both of them do have upgrades on the way. Obviously, we see a lives are a lot quicker. He kind of did get himself into this position with that great reaction to the Zergling Rush. So, you know, we might have a pretty strong timing attack coming out of Alive in the future. I, You know, I hope so, because, man, I just see it so often where the Terran player will kind of pull back and maybe play a little bit too defensively, mm -hmm. uh, especially after they're faced with such heavy aggression early on. And, you know, right now that's the kind of the mode that Alive is in. He's like, oh, I just need to make sure that I build my depot walls and have all of my defense set up. And this is his way of getting out on the map, trying to clean up the creep a little bit and maybe have an option to do something aggressive. Yeah. Clearing some of this creep is really important right now. What Alive should be aiming for is a maxed out 2-2 timing push. Because if he hits that, it's going to be, he's going to be up to upgrades. His army's going to be at, like, peak strength. Mm -hmm. Rogue is, like... I mean, it looks like it's going to be Ling Bane Muta here from Rogue. And max out 2-2. Two, two. As long as you micro that, control that correctly, you're going to be in a good spot as alive, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're uh, not quite maxed out just yet, but I don't think that there's anything. Certainly, Alive's not going to push the issue before we get there. So this is uh, yeah, good job controlling this creep. We haven't seen creep make it beyond the halfway point in the map. And that's kind of... Strange yeah. for a game that has been this passive, because usually you'll just see chaotic creep spread during these moments. Well, uh, keeping that back is so important, like we mentioned before. Now, there's a second factory on the way, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. I, I think he'll probably switch into mines, but right now he has produced tanks mostly. A move out occurring. I wonder what his idea is with this. Like, is he going to try really hard to push the fort? It seems that way. A good job raising the depot right there, but obviously everything else outside that depot is probably not going to have a great day. And even though he pulls the majority of those links back, he might really not have even needed to. Uh, I mean, there's not really that much coming back for it, but uh, here are the Mutas, and that's really going to be the tech switch that I'm not sure Alive would have noticed. Obviously, he saw the the uh, the Spire uh, with a scan, but still, this is going to require a lot to deal with, especially without that turret in the mineral line! Yeah, there's one at the natural, so that's good at least. Uh, the Muta's going to jump on it immediately, though. Rogue showing absolutely no fear. Does have to run away as the Marines stem up, though. He's squatulating there, Artosis. Yes. That was our, he absquatulated our... those Mutas very quickly. Yeah, now he gets in, and watch as he absquatulates right back out again. Actually, no! There's not enough Marines there, Artosis! Wow, he should have absquatulated his Marines. That's he should have known. You are correct. Your analysis impeccable as always. Um, yeah, now every other Terran unit <laughs> might have to run away too. Um, these tanks left unprotected, fodder for the swarm. Oh my god, those tanks getting ab sasquatulated right there. <laughs> that, that's right, no one will believe they ever existed. No, certainly. <laughs> Link Bane just kind of rolling in right now. No micro on the Marines either. Everything hey. just dying. I Bit out of nowhere, Rogue just exploding over everything that Alive has. Yeah, I, I feel like we can see a, a difference in player skill by a little bit here. Like, Rogue pulled his attention a little bit. I feel like Alive lost a bit more Marines than he should have, a bit more SCBs than he should have here as well. And now his 2-2 is finishing. 
So if everything went right, he'd be maxing out right about now and pushing, mm -hmm. right? This would be the perfect time, and you should have siege tanks with it or mines or whatever. Uh, you know, but he lost those three siege tanks in the front yeah. of the lings. Basically, this situation went from this this could have been amazing to uh, okay, we have to play a longer macro game. And the long macro games are oftentimes the places where a live falls apart. Yeah, it's clear that he understands how to navigate maybe the early and mid game, but right when it comes to these later game situations. Uh, I don't think historically he's shown a lot of strength there. So yeah. some Baneling landmines laid, changelings out there getting scouting. I, I mean, Rogue seems to really be taking charge of this game. He's gotten pretty much all of the bases on his side of the map. He's just now expanding to his one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and instead of being able to push out and put on pressure, like you were saying, Alive now has to sit back and defend that fledgling base he's just now getting up. Yeah. Uh, you know, at least he is on four bases. Like if. If he had to start that fourth command center or something, that would have been just the the worst. But uh looks like Rogue, oh, no. that's kinda cute. <laughs> Mine's out there to get a little bit of baneling harassment going on. See how good Okay, well we'll never know how that story ends, but uh they're oh no! Okay, I thought they were, those were flanking banelings, but they're still gonna get in here. Uh barely Oh my Oh my god, ten STVs cry out and we're suddenly silenced 15 in the end and there's more zerg flooding through the tiny cracks in his mineral armor oh my gosh thankfully marines are good so he holds on there but still losing more and more yeah, it, rogue is playing a really strong game man oh and a knight is really too. strong game so i mean the the old meme used to be that rogue was the sexy boy but he is he's he's reclaiming my oh okay wow. all right that was that was that was pretty sick oh wow uh, Many wow. Some some attractive widow mines there. It's a yeah. good day to be a widow mine, Artosis. I guess so. Look at this counterattacking as the that uh knight is open. Oh my god, the Bane Link's coming out and helping to clean up that army. Rogue is just trading really beautifully with his Link Bane. Beautiful. You know, he's just it, He's playing so nicely here. Yeah, he's never even put into a place where he has to attack head on uh, into anything. Yeah. He's attacking from every different direction. The Mutas are harassing, the Nidus's are getting in, the Banings are running by, and it's all just a little bit too much for Alive to handle. Yeah, a lot of the time, that's what can be hard for Ling Bane Muta is the head up confrontation. Right. So that's why, you know, the 2-2 the timing attack could have been a good idea. But you look at this, it's just counterattacks for days and picking off stray units. Rogue is playing a magnificent game, and. Alive is having a hard time defending everything. Ah, yeah, he's just being picked apart little by little, and that's it. GG Rogue takes out Alive in game number one. All right. Uh, I mean, that that looked like the Rogue of old. Not stylistically, necessarily. Like, Ling Bay Nita is not always his thing. I feel like he kind of ro rose up in the, the time of yeah. Hydralisks a lot, but... Um, he, it, it was awesome play. That was that was top tier Zerk play. Alive, I feel like he made a few good early decisions, and then his multitasking was a little bit off. His creep spread denial was very very strong though. Right there, there were some redeeming things about Alive's play, but he's got to bring a hell of a lot more than that. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember Alive in his heyday as the guy who would perennially eliminate Scarlet and a lot of other very strong Zerg players from the early rounds of uh, you know, 20, 30, or 32 and 16, but uh, it's been a long time since then, and uh, so it's nice to see that Alive at least reacts correctly in a lot of situations, but Rogue clearly uh, the superior player in Game 1. All right, Cyber Forest going to be our next map. Pretty small map overall. Maybe Alive can hit a nice timing push here. I feel like that's where his strength is. He needs to get Rogue in that mid game. Let's get into it. Game two on Cyber Forest. This is Cyber Forest, and our first player Africa is... Afrika S2, alive. Yeah! I think during his speech, Kevin said something nice about, you know, hoping that his players do well. Mm -hmm. Well, this is one of them. Hmm. Hopefully he can live up to the expectations. Yeah. This is... Janair Greenwings, Whoa. He's got, he's got some expectations, too. It's like, if you have one of the coveted spots on the last remaining Korean pro game team, you better earn it. Well, I tell you, he is a champion of many, many tournaments. Not GSL yet, though. 
Yeah, that's true. He's won just like hundreds of thousands of dollars in other tournaments. I think he's the third highest winning player in the world? Probably, right? It's like SRS Maru Innovation, Serral must be up there now. Yeah. I don't I don't check SC Tuner earnings every day like Todd, so I'm not 100% up to date. Yeah, but you I can't would, tell which players are the best. Imagine. Well, we're pretty sure that Rogue has been a, an incredible player uh, at many points in his career, but yeah. It's time to get back to the top, just like our excellent fanalist has uh, has said. Fanalist? Yeah, a fan who's an analyst. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. That's what the sign said earlier. Uh, but, uh, gotcha. yeah, I always pretend like all the signs are written, written in Korean. Oh, just, I just don't even. I, I'm normally, the thing is, we have two screens. One is always in game. If there's one thing I bring to the GSL, it's fan interaction, Artosis. That's what they're always saying about you. If it's not me in the crowd with a fan sign, it's somebody else. So i got to put some respect yeah. on that name. Well, either way, this time, maybe Alive will get a chance to build his add on. It certainly looks will. that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing cheeky coming out of Rogue this game. So Alive going to be able to do as he has practiced. Uh, I'm hoping that we can see him hit something very sharp. You know, he Alive is a player that wants some micro smallish to medium-ish exactly. amounts of units. Mm -hmm. He wants to hit timing attacks, very sharp ones. He wants to get some multi-pronged harassment going at that time. Uh, but, you know, like we were talking about, if it gets in those later games, which is actually where Rogue is very strong, you know, that's, that's Alive's weakness versus another Zerg's strength. Yeah. So that is absolutely not the territory he wants to go into. Definitely again. a mismatch. Yeah, for a long time, I think the late 2016, when Alive was really you know, putting up some big numbers, he uh, he would always do this like double medevac push that came out just so fast, so powerful, and a lot of Zergs uh, were just unprepared for it. He got a lot of mileage off of that. But I think subsequently, especially with a lot of the map changes, not quite on par, especially if you have your tempo thrown off like Rogue is kind of able to do. But this time, you know, we're going according to schedule. We're playing an honorable macro game for now. That's what we want, honorable macro games. So the starport coming up, making Hellions at the moment. Everything looking very normal. We'll see what type of tech Rogue wants to do with this layer. Well, he's getting it pretty much un, uh, harassed, unscouted yeah. for the meantime. Yeah, I'm trying to keep an eye on this Reaper. Finally, it gets around the Zerglings. Yeah, it'll see that third base. Shouldn't be too much of a surprise. He was pretty actively uh, preventing the uh, the drone from getting over to the third that Rogue wanted to take. Popping up, Ooh, but good no. Catch. Good and now catch. the Queen's yeah, pushing it back. I love that type of little two and fro where they both know what each other is doing mm -hmm. and how to do it perfectly against each other, and they both still go for it. Because if their opponent doesn't do what they're supposed to do, then hey, you get the Reaper in or something, right? Oh, there it is. Yeah, All right. I was wondering if we we're, we're going to see We're this. done with the honorable macro time. Mm -hmm. It's time to get... Dirty? Uh, yeah, that. Well, get... I guess the Nidus does technically go through the dirt or through the metal plating if that's the tile set for the map. But here it is it actually dirt. That's right. That Nidus is, really has a can-do attitude. Yeah, the... the... No one knows the real science behind the Nidus. Maybe it's... Oh, I'm sure there's lore somewhere, but I don't think that it all fits in a tweet, so you're safe from that kind of retribution. Yes, I guess so. Okay, Nidus just about ready. A lot of links out here right now. And I love what he's doing. He's going to hit from the front oh and the back. And it, oh, even the patrolling Marine oh, doesn't see no. it. Alive. I'm so sorry your name is about to be invalidated. Oh, this is bad news. There's, uh, yeah, the Hellions are running across the map. He's going to lose one stationarily. And, oh, these... <laughs> Congratulations, you're harassing the middle line. But look at what's happening to your base. From the front to oh the back. God. Everywhere being run over. There's nothing that Alive can do at home. These Hellions harassing are totally perfunctory. GG. Yeah. Rogue. 2-0. That, that was really, really rough. Uh, I think what gets me about that one is that even if the Nidus hadn't came, the Lynx just running into the front, those three Hellions on the other side of the map weren't going to do as much if there wasn't a Nidus, right? Because the Queens would be yeah. there. So it's like the fact that even the Lynx run into the natural was powerful. I gotta, I, I just feel like Alive did not play his best game so far today. Yeah, I think obviously a little bit of a mystery there, but coming up next, we've got our winner's match. It's going to be Rogue versus Parting. Oh, what a game that's going to be. Don't miss it. We'll be right back with our winner's match coming up next.